Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Train Rush by MTE Games. This is a two to four player game that takes roughly about uh, anywhere between 120 minutes to 240 based on the number of players, and it's for ages 12 and up. And in the game Train Rush, you're playing as um, one of many different distinct nations uh, in a new land attempting to gather coal, working cooperatively to a certain extent, but also trying to control the market. You'll be utilizing your trains and your cars to gather and transport resources from one station to another, visiting the black market and stopping on railway depots in order to secure unique and new bonuses. Don't forget to add your spies to the mix as they visit different locations to improve your prosperity and attempt to score the most points by the end of the game. This game plays roughly between eight to nine rounds and is going to basically have two main game boards and your large player board. This is a heavy euro game. You guys ready? We'll talk about the basics idea of how to set the game up, how to play, and of course my review. There's also a link in the description where I watched a video that did a very very good job of explaining the full setup and how to play of the game. So for anything that I miss out on or I don't cover because it will not be a completely in-depth how to play, you can check out the link down below in the description. But anyway, I think I'll cover most of it. Let's go ahead and get started. To begin setup, first decide how many players you are playing and then plan accordingly. Uh, there's going to be hero cards and movement cards that are going to be uh, based on the number of players that you're going to be drafting in this game. Take the two main game boards and place them next to each other. Take the middle of the game board, place the first marker on the round one tracker. It's going to go from one round one to nine and based on the number of players playing, we'll determine how many rounds are in the game eight for three or more, and nine for two players. Then take the train cards of each individual player and place them on the one, two, and three track in any order. Take the main big trains and set them on the starting space. This is where the middle area meets with the train board. Go ahead and just randomly shuffle them up and throw them down on the game board. Then each of the different stations or cities is going to have three of these guys here, a green, a red, and a blue one, two markers to symbolize movement and victory points, and as well as making sure that each of the cities has a city marker. These markers are just going to have the city um, symbol printed on the top left hand corner of the game board. After you've done that, then go ahead and go to the other game board. This other game board should have basically a marker for each player in the one section on the top right hand side. Uh, these shuffled uh, bonus markers, that are kind of like rectangles, just go ahead and deal out nine of them randomly. Shuffle the rest of them and place them in the three spots just because of size issues. Take the uh, transporting or supply tokens and place them in sections for two, three, four, and five. Shuffle them individually and then place three out going upwards along the uh, column. Then, if you have room or otherwise set aside these tokens, but you can place tokens for each player on the bottom left hand side of the game board next to these scoring areas or just simply next to you and when you grab them and place them you'll be putting them down here. I also took the liberty of placing the influence markers as well as the other little tokens on the bottom right hand side of the game board. The last thing you do for the main game board is you take your two starting trains, place them on the uh, bottom right hand side, that is going to start you off at zero victory points and there's a board here that goes all the way up to 50. Now for your main player board. Your main player board is going to come with spies, one through nine in the top left hand side corner. On the top right hand side is going to have these city markers and you'll have one through nine there. Then you're going to have these uh, warehouses and you'll have one placed in each of the warehouse slot in the middle of the game board. And on the right hand side are these depots, place one in each of the six main slots. Uh, you're going to have tokens, which you'll set either on the bottom um, left of the game board over here, or you can place them on the side here. But place the rest of your main circular tokens in the area on the bottom left. And then any starting resources that you're going to have are going to go on the bottom right hand side of your game board. Each player is also going to get two train cars to start the game off with. They're singular ones, they actually say one on the backhand side. They're starting with one being a wild and the other one being a brown. Additionally, you're going to get movement cards. Check the rules based on the number of players for how many of each of the movement cards and hero cards you get. Additionally, hero cards are going to be drafted, so you're going to get the cards, shuffle them up and deal with all, all players, and then each player is going to pick a number of them and pass them, pick a number and pass, and then eventually you're going to be left with however many cards you need for the number of players you're playing the game with. After that, you're basically ready to start the game. Uh, go ahead and set aside all the resource tokens. Make a stack of twos and threes for your train cards, as well as the special two and threes, and deal out three for each. And then your movement cards. Shuffle the deck and deal out uh, 
number of players plus one down in a row or a column, just based on how you have room. There you go, there's the setup for the game. Like I said, there's a better explanation if you wanna see everything fully in depth uh, on the video in the description. Let's go ahead and cover how to play now. Train Rush uses three things. It uses rounds, phases, and turns. We're gonna talk about a two-player game here, and in a two-player game, there are nine rounds to the game. The game can also end early. If one player is able to place all nine of their visiting markers on the different city spaces on the main track, then you're going to end the game early and score an additional 10 points. Otherwise, you'll simply go through each of the different phases until the end phase, in which case you'll rinse and repeat, moving the marker and continuing. There are seven phases in the game. The first is the auction phase. Then there's the lobby phase, the income phase, investment phase, the movement phase, your mission phase, and then the end phase, rinse and repeat. The first phase of the game is the auction phase. In the auction phase, you'll take one of your spies. These are the numbered meeples on the top left-hand side of your game board, and you'll place any one of them down that you want onto the auction track. The auction track is in the middle of the game board, and the first player who starts this on the first round is the one randomly assigned on this little track here. So we'll say that black is the one that first starts. Every other player is going to take one of their meeples as well and place it down on the track here in any of the positions. Then, after each player has done so, you'll check the numbers. Highest number will go first, lowest number is last, and it'll be from ascending to descending order. So we have purple here, purple has chosen six, and the black has chosen three, in which case the purple train will move to the front position and the black train will move to the back position. And that's it, that's how every auction phase in the game will go. Then you have the lobby phase. The lobby phase is pretty simple as well. You will take your marker in turn order one at a time and only one spy, the one in the middle of the game board, and place it on any one of these tracks on the separate game board on the top left hand side. There are a ton of sectors. You have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 of them. There's only one rule to it mainly, and that's when you place one of your one of your spies down, the next players can never place in that same row unless you're playing a four-player game, in which case they can choose any row if they are the fourth player selecting. And of course, additionally, there's the first column here where only one of each of your spies may go. You may never have more than one spy in this area, but you can have more in all the rest of them. Take your spy, place it on one of the top sections of each of the sectors, always from left down to right, and place it laying down. When you place that guy, you'll move up your marker on the track on the top right hand side of the game board, and additionally you'll gain any bonus that your guy is sitting on. The next player will do the same thing, taking one of their markers and placing it down on the game board in any of the 15 sectors, uh, always left to right and always in the top area. And move their marker on the game board, and then after everyone has done so, you will stand your markers up. Once you've standed all your markers up, you'll move on to the next phase, and that is the income phase. The income phase is pretty simple. Basically, you look at the top right-hand side of the secondary game board, and you'll go from the uh, first section to the second to the third, ignoring the last two. The first section will tell you how many influence tokens you get. And if you look, you'll see, where's the black marker? It's on three or four, in which case you'll take three or four markers. And then the purple, it's on two, you will take two markers. You'll take those investment markers and you'll place them on your investment marker area on your game board in the bottom right hand corner. Moving on to coal and doing the same thing. Where is the marker at? How many do you get? How many do you place on your board? The final one is going to be placing goods on your wagons, the wagons or your train cars, in which case you will take the goods from the supply and place them on one, two, three, or four, or five, or six, and so on and so forth, uh, a number of these guys. If you have more number of, of wagons that you can place on, then you have wagons available, just fill up all of your train cars. After you fill up all of your train cars, or as many as you can, then the income phase is over and it's time to start investing. Investing is actually quite simple as well. Investing will start with the first player, and instead of just one turn, players will get multiple turns. I will choose to invest or pass, and then the next player will choose to invest or pass, and everybody will keep going around choosing to invest up until the point where they choose to pass. Once you pass, you can no longer invest and you're out of this phase. To invest, you'll take your influence markers and you will place them down on the game board. 
if there's a sign that says three plus, those are spaces where only in a three or four player game can be utilized. And each of these spaces do different things. They might give you coal in exchange for influence. They may let you place out factories or warehouses in exchange for influence. You can fill up your carts. You can move your train. You're going to be able to do upgrade your trains from a one to a two car or a two to a three car or even a three to a three. And you can also choose a special car that will let you gain special resources only from the city board. You're also gonna be able to draw your uh, action cards, which are gonna be like your movement cards for the game, uh, draw a certain number of them and discard down to have a certain number of them. And the final one is you'll be able to place your agents out. Agents work just like spies, but they use the bottom portion of these 15 tracks on the top left hands of the secondary game board. You will place them just like you would normally do from left to right, but just on the bottom section. And with these guys, there's no rules. You can place as many as you want in any of the areas in the bottom section. However, when the section gets filled, there's no more that you can place. After I have chosen to invest and the next player invests and so on up until we all pass, that will trigger the end of the investment phase and we'll go on to movement. Movement is the most complex, and I'll try and do my best to just explain it away for you, but how it works is you're going to start with movement cards in the game. These movement cards are blue, and they're going to have a number on them in the top left-hand corner going down, and there's three numbers total, followed by a bonus action. You can choose to use any number of these actions from top to bottom. If you use all of them, you may use the bonus action. And if you use the bonus action, you may choose to not use that one, but a different one from a card from your hand. If you do that though, you'll discard that card as well, and you're only ever gonna get to drop back up to one of these action cards after you utilize them. If you don't utilize one, you will not draw up from the area over there. If I have one here as an example, I have one that says five and it has a cube that is going to reference to move five spaces and spend one coal. If the next one says six and two, I can additionally move an extra six spaces by spending an extra two coal. And then there's a one for three, which means I can move an extra one space for three more coal. Followed up with a bonus of one coal in order to do the special bonus action. And these guys all do different things. They can give you victory points or coal or influence. They might allow you to place your factories, the warehouses, that kind of thing. And they're all different. You can look them up in the rule book for that explanation. But you'll take these, you'll play one, you'll spend the coal, and you'll move your train. Okay, so now we know how many times you can move and how, how we can use the movement cards. Let's talk about movement. First of all, trains are gonna start in this main depot in the middle of the area. Second of all, if you move a number of spaces, you're always going to be moving clockwise, never counterclockwise around this game board. There are train depots here where you can kind of cross through in order to go from one section of the board to another. There are three main areas on the game board. There's the middle, there's the center section, and there's the outside sector, all connected by these depots, allowing you to move outside and then back inside. So as long as you're moving, uh, you always have to expend all of your movement, no matter what. If you have five spaces, you must move five. You may not move four and you may not move six. There are a few exceptions to the rule. Exception number one, if you move onto a black market space, looks kind of like a pyramid or a mountain of sorts, you may stop no matter how many movement you have left. The other rule is if you move on to a city space, city spaces are big circles with the name of the city next to it, you may stop there as well. The other thing is that there is these train areas here that have three different rows of numbers. You may not stop when moving through them, but if you do, it will trigger an action. So go ahead and move to your heart's content. You may stop on the black market or the city spaces. And if you stop on the train depot sections, these little railway crossings, you'll get a bonus action. There are three bonus actions you can take on the game board, the railway crossings, the black market, and the city. We'll cover them in any random order. The first we'll talk about is the railway crossings. Basically, when you're moving through and you end up on one of the spaces on the railway crossings, uh, you can choose to go up, down, or directly in the middle. And depending on the space you land on, we'll have a number. That number is going to be in regard to one of the bonus tiles in the middle of the secondary game board that you can take and use that bonus action. When you do that, replenish it with one from the right hand side. Then after you've taken your bonus action, you're going to tr be able to take one of the unique tokens um, that might've been placed there. There's these little symbols that have like a little black and white kind of like, look like, like a train symbol. You can take that and put it on one of your special train cars, provided that you have it. After that, you're going to go into a scoring phase. You'll score the area right above the uh, railway crossing. 
You will look to see if there are any warehouses with little guys above them, and each player who owns that warehouse will get to move up on the track on the bottom left hand side of the bonus game board um, for each warehouse that they have of that guy of that color. And in this case here, you have like a green guy on purple and a red guy on um, black. Black will move the red position and uh, the purple will move the green position on the board here. Whenever you move any of your markers across any symbol, that's a bonus action. You can instantly take that action. Additionally, you're going to be scoring these uh, train depots, these fa factory areas here. Um, basically, that, that player is going to score based on the number of these, these tokens here. In which case, in this uh, example, the red factory will move up two spaces for black. And that's basically how every railway crossing will work. You also have the city actions. When you move your train onto a city, you're going to do the first thing, which is take the token on the bottom left hand side of that city or adjacent if there is one available and place one of your visiting markers. These are the numbered markers on the top right hand side of your game board. Place it down and take that token, score the victory points, and then you can use it for movement, but only for your cards in the movement phase. After you've done that, you may take any one of these uh, colored meeple guys, these workers here, and place them on any factory um, or warehouse that has a factory. And as long as you do so, that is going to be able to allow you to gain victory points during the scoring for the railway section. Um, additionally, after moving this guy here, you're going to get to push yourself up on the track on the bottom right hand, left hand side of the game board with the little character um, at a number of spaces. Once again, checking for any bonuses that you might get by moving across them. The last thing you can do is turn-ins. This is the where you're going to be utilizing your resources from your train cars. You may spend your train cars provided you're in the location and there's no space that has been blocked on the location. So if we have like this area called Blackborough, and we'll check, okay, Blackboro here, we're on that city. Uh, I have a yellow and a brown resource. I can spend those, take that two car, score the victory points, and place one of my markers on the two section of the Blackboro area. And you're going to be turning these guys in, utilizing your resources. And that's how you're going to be wanting to fill up and change based on what city you're going to and what resources that they need. After the city action, there's the black market action. The black market action is actually pretty simple. It's on your game board on the left-hand side, and it'll explain. It says, A, you may, if you're on the black market space, dump your resources for virtual currency. From there, you may, as long as you're in that sector, use this action for that sector, spend that virtual currency for one of the actions in this list here. And this list has a variety of different things you can do. It lets you draw the action cards and discard or exchange or cha cha chains or trains, as well as placing down your agents on this area. And there's other ways where you're going to be able to gain some victory points too. And after you've done that, that would end your turn for the movement section. Move your train, determine if you're on a city, a black market, or a railway crossing, complete those, and then move on to the missions. Missions! Missions are these hero cards you're going to be getting in the game. After, you've done, after you're done drafting them, you'll be able to utilize these in the mission phase. Are you A, in the area that the mission requires? And there's blue, there's red, and there's green. And if so, play this guy down. When you play him down, you'll take the marker from the city space. It has this big circle of the specific icon of that city, and you'll place it on the hero, indicating that this is the only hero that can be used for that specific city. If any other player has a marker or a, a hero with that marker required, they cannot use it. So be careful and decide which heroes are best to play and in what order. These heroes will give you a bonus action, whether it be to draw an action card or move your train or take a bonus action, um, as well as a victory condition for the end of the game based on a number of resources of a certain type in your train that you have left over. For instance, this one guy here says that for each blue cube you have, you'll score one, two, then three, then five, and then eight victory points going all the way down to five resources. It's a good way to end the game and score bonus points. When I have played my hero, uh, the next player will play their hero in turn order, then it will end the phase. And then you'll move on to the end step. The end step will determine is the game over? Did anybody reach all nine spaces? Is it now, is it after the ninth round? In which case the game will end and you will score. Otherwise, you'll simply move the round tracker one space to the uh, right, and then you will empty out all of the investment markers, you will refill the action cards, and you will begin the next round with the auction phase. And you will rinse and repeat and continue from there. 
And that is how you play the game. I know it's in a nutshell. I tried to explain it's a very heavy year, it's very thick. So there's probably some things, little things about like the maybe different actions that you can take that I probably left out. But that is how you play the game. Uh, at the end of the game, you're going to be scoring, and there is a boatload of things to score. First of all, you have the top right-hand side of the game board. Based on how far you are up on this track, you can score 10 points. You have the bottom, the top left-hand side of this game board, which is for each of your agents and spies combined. If you have the most, you can score six points, and the next player can score two points, and that's for every single one. You're also going to have the middle game board area where you're going to be de de deploying your supplies uh, from your wagons and taking those little, little tokens to give you points. If you have the most of each in each of these areas, you'll score either 12 or 6 points respectively. And then the very bottom area over here will score you points as well. Whoever's marker is farthest on the track here will score you a number of points based on the right-hand side of that marker area. Additionally, you can score more points. You'll score points if you remove all of your visiting markers for each of your heroes at the end of the game. They'll trigger and you'll check to see how many points you got. And also along the way, you can score victory points from various markers that you get from visiting cities and cards that you play, whether it be even bonus actions from some of your movement cards. Uh, there is a lot of different ways to score in this game, but after you've gone through it all, whoever has the most points is the winner. Okay. What do I think about Train Rush? Train Rush is no joke. This is an advanced style Euro game. This is one of those big boys where you sit down and you are going to be playing a two to four hour game. Even in a two player game, this is going to be about two hours. So I want you guys to be aware of what you are going to be getting yourself into. This is not a light family friendly style game. This is a heavy Euro. This is a Euro that involves lots of mechanics and different phases. Some phases might be simpler than others. And as you go through the phases, the game is actually quite simple to understand. Um, but each phase has its own unique extra little things like your movement phase, playing your movement card and understanding that you can spend resources for extra movement. If you spend them all, you can gain the bonus and you can discard another card from your hand to gain that bonus. And then based on where you move, there are three different locations that will trigger an extra step, whether it be the city, the black market, or the railway crossing. And each of those is going to involve moving these contractor guys to your warehouses or, or, or maybe even spending resources to gain bonus action or scoring the different areas with your warehouses, your factories, and the contractors. And you might even score different players, um, specific types of warehouses based on the contractors present there. And so this is going to have a lot, and I mean quite a lot, of thought you're going to need to put into this game. If you like a heavy thinker and a game that takes quite a bit of like manu manufacturing what you want to do on your turn, this is going to be the game for you for sure. Uh, I know for a fact that my editor Brian would love this game. He loves those heavy thinking, uh, critical like choices in games. And this one here, there's no luck in this game. This is all simply utilizing your actions and spending them to perform the best you could possibly can, you possibly can do. I mean, I guess there's a, a minute amount of luck in the different movement cards that you can draw and the train cards available to you. But geez, it is so minute because of how much options or how many options you have and how you can rectify and change your trains and the cards that you get based on all the different phases of the game. Now that being said, yes, this is a heavy game and there's a lot of thought you need to put into it. And it's gonna be one of those that you sit down and this is the game you play for that night but it is worth it. There are a lot of choices. Being able to A, choose your turn order, and it makes a huge difference who plays when and how you choose to use your spies. And then those spies are going to actively allow you to move up on a track that gives you income. And while yes, everybody's income track is gonna have the same number of movements as far as going up, how you choose to move those pieces and what resources you gain will score you maybe additional points at the end of the game if you move far enough on those. And then being able to use them and utilize them for the best of your ability is really cool. Moving on from that, you then have the available availability to uh, invest, and each of these investment spaces provide you with a ton of unique benefits. This is like a huge, really cool bonus area where you can basically do anything in the game, all the different phases, can be present, present right here in this investment space, but you have to use those markers. And to get those markers, it might cost you more in other phases, like the ability to lobby. Um, and being able to move the trains and gather the cards and change your trains out is very, very important in this game. What it all comes down to though really is movement. Moving your train from one city to another, to a railway crossing, to the black market, and how you choose to make certain individual cities score, 
based on who's present there is going to be important as well. Choosing how you move and where you place is going to be heavily, heavily like important in this game. If you see other players trains in certain areas, you can kind of manufacture a way in which that city in front of them that they currently wanted to stop to now scores you victory points based on a phase where you placed one of your different uh, factories or warehouses on that location. So the scoring is going to be beneficial for you. And so you can manipulate your other opponents to actually help you throughout the game and you might in turn have to help them out based on how you place. It's cutthroat, but it's cooperative cooperative as well. Cooperative in the sense that everybody's working together and placing down their different engineer guys in different locations, uh, kind of having them invest in different locations and whatnot and utilizing their factories and everybody can score in a given area, but really everybody's looking out for themselves and everybody's intent on basically controlling the market while working together in this train game. Uh, the mission phase, where you're basically taking one of the heroes out and placing it down. Sometimes you might have had the same hero as somebody else, or at least the same location. You can't utilize that, so where you are on the board matters. And what you choose to draft in this mission phase is going to be important as well. And so each and every little step of this game has really minute but important choices. Even the hero cards, maybe you don't care about necessarily having the resources at the end of the game to score points, but you want that bonus action. So at the very beginning of the game, you're kind of already setting out to determine what you want to do. You could have a really fast choo-choo train that just moves around the game board and scores you a ton of points, going from city to city and railway crossing trying to score. Uh, you can have a investment type firm where you're focusing on all of your investments and utilizing your investment markers to make, take bonus actions on the game board where everybody else is done and has no investment, but you are the monopoly man and you have a ton of investment markers that you can place down, in which case you can take a boatload of investment actions, moving your train and placing down the specific factories, et cetera, et cetera, and warehouses, as well as gaining coal. You might have no way of gaining coal, but now you do. Or maybe the coal guy. You just want lots of coal for lots of movement, for lots of bonus actions that you can take on your movement cards that you're gonna constantly get in the game. Or perhaps you're even going to be the guy who focuses on their train cars. You've got a lot of train cars. A lot of train cars with a lot of ways to put resources on them to dump them in order to gain the victory points in this area here. And when you gain those victory points in the area with your coal and with your different types of resources here, you can also visit the black market, which will give you a similar idea to the investment area, but they're stronger at a cost and only in certain areas on the game board. There is a ton. It's a winding path of a game and where you choose to go is all up to you. There's a boatload of pieces, and each of the pieces are based on the different areas of the game board that you need to place them down on. Um, are there negatives? I mean, the negatives to this game are pretty simple and straightforward. It's a heavy Euro. Like, that's gonna be a very specific type of audience. This game is not gonna see a lot of play on my table, just specifically because a lot of the players here that I play with are used to the more casual style games, where I do have a group of individuals who loves the heavy ones, and that is when I would bring this bad boy out. The great thing about it is it will cover an entire game night, it's a heavy thinker, it's gonna make you critically have to decide different choices in the game. Basically, games like this make you smarter, and that's a good enough reason to pick it up not on its own. Let's talk about the art. This game has got Art, which covers the theme. Everything is sectioned off and it makes sense. Each portion of the game board is memorable. Learning the rules one day, you'll come back to this game and still remember them the next day, which is great. You know this area is where you're going to be placing down during the lobby phase and your spies are gonna come down and your agents will come down. Over here is where you're investing. Uh, in, in, or your spies and your agents will invest you moving you guys up here. And then you'll invest over here in this area. And then you have the score trackers here and here, which will also gain you resources and also bonus tokens. And then bam, over here is another separate type of game, which is all about moving. And you have the only three areas you have to go to, cities, the uh, railway crossings, and the black market. But moving and how you choose to move is so important and attached to this. This is all kind of all put together where you have what it is in real life and then what you're doing kind of on like in, in the machine, in, in, the, in the corporate world of what you are doing as railway conductors of large cities, of large, basically like civilizations. I think there's three of them in this game and it's all about the main resource which is coal. And then 
all the tracks. I, I, I love how each of this fits into the world of how you're utilizing their contractors and your warehouses and when you turn stuff in. And the more that you do, the more you're liked. With more reputation gives you more victory points. And a visiting space is important too with the theme attached to the art of the game where you're basically going from one city to the next city. If you visit the mall, you can end the game early because you influenced everybody and people like you. So you'll gain victory points that way. And then just certain types of your people that work with you are, are heroes in a way that they're kind of like contract conducting the trains, making sure they go where they need to go, and giving you these bonuses for being such hard workers. Ah, it just fits in so well, and it's very, very memorable to me, which I really, really enjoyed. Quality of the game, excellent, excellent. All the pieces are wood, all the game boards are double thick. There's almost no issues I have with this, and this is still a prototype, so there are changes that are probably, or might possibly, happen in the game, in which case, just as an FYI, if it's not exactly like this when you get your copy, that eh, can happen. But as of what the resources and pieces I have here are showing, this is gonna be a great Euro game. And it's gonna be fitting in with the big boys of all of like the board and dice games and whatnot. All of these pieces are high quality. So if you like a heavy thinker, a thick game, a long game, a game with a beautiful theme and kind of a unique twist on not only what it's like to move the trains in the real world where you're going, but also the business sector uh, and like what you're doing in like that kind of corporate world, all while utilizing your train and what you have available to you in your kind of civilization on your main board. Oh boy, this has got a whole lot of that. So if you um, enjoy these type of games, you're going to really like this one. But for those of you who like a more casual or moderate game, this will be a huge snooze fest for you because you're gonna feel like it's very mechanical, you're gonna feel like it's very long, and I suggest you stay away from it. But any of you guys that enjoy those big boy versions, then this is one to definitely check out. Train Rush, definitely give this guy a look on Kickstarter or GameFound, wherever it is, there'll be a link down below in the description. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Train Rush. If you're interested in this, then go ahead and check out, like I said before, the link down below where you can pick up this big boy. You can also go and check out our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, our website unfilteredgamer.com where we have blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And of course, my favorite thing, if you've watched more than one of our videos and you appreciate love our content, and just love seeing my shining face every day, then you can go ahead and push that subscribe button so you can see more of our videos where we cover games like this, all the way to super tiny games like Sausage, this little game here by uh, Jolly Hazard, uh, the Joking Hazard guys. Anyway guys, thank you so much for uh, watching the video, and as always, I look forward to uh, basically making sure that my corporation reigns supreme in the financial sector in coal, comparatively to you, next time.